So I know it has been a while since I've checked in with you guys in regards to the fringe leaf frogs and we've been doing a lot of moving around from Maryland to California and we finally got these guys set up in a cage that I feel like is appropriate to make a video letting you guys basically get an idea on the care for the fringe leaf frogs and update for those of whom that may have watched the previous video that have subscribed and also just as a way for you guys to see a species that's not super common for one in the pet trade and for two to see in the wild. So these guys are native to Central America as well as a few parts of Mexico and they stay so, so high up in the canopy that unfortunately even when you're out on expeditions or you may go to the Peruvian Amazon, unless you have people that already know where these guys usually are, it's gonna be pretty difficult to see them because they are in that upper canopy level. So let's get a good look at them and as you guys can see, uh, I do have gloves on today. I'll be honest, I'm pretty cautious about what I put on my body and things of that nature. So sometimes I may not use gloves, but if you're not experienced and you know that you use different types of oils or things that are very alcohol based, I would not recommend handling these guys without some sort of glove. So here's an example of what one looks like. And as you guys can see, they are a beautiful example of the species of tree frog. They have these yellow sidebars with the absolutely huge hands, the slit eyes, as well as this baby blue backing with the white splotches all over the body. And as you guys can see, that fringe right there along the back leg helps to break the body up when predators are looking down, up, looking down at them in the upper canopy. These are a huge species of tree frog. I have big hands, but this female is probably about three inches or so. And the way usually that you can know with tree frogs or any species of frog, the easiest way, if it's male or female, is just based on calling. So these are not called at all in any way, shape, or form. And they are on the larger side. Males are going to be a little bit smaller because they need to be able to grapple onto the back of the actual frog. But as you guys can see, let's get a good look at her while she's up. They're just beautiful, man. They're a gorgeous example of tree frogs and you know just providing you guys with a care guide is never going to be able to do enough to let you guys get an idea on just how beautiful they are in person and if you have the experience and you're ever looking for a species of tree frog i recommend getting these guys even though they are on the more expensive side it allows you to get an idea on you know just how much care needs to go into these animals. and as you guys can see this enclosure behind me is pretty much exactly what you're going to need to set up something proper for a frog that gets almost three and a half four inches so we've got our big leaf alocasias in there, as well as a few species of philodendrons, uh, some aeroids, as well as some bromeliads and some climbing plants to help with the background. And all of this is a custom enclosure, which you guys I'm sure have watched videos on before, uh, which are just going to be your normal uh, ABG mix on the bottom that I make myself. Uh, just going to be your normal peat moss, as well as a mix of sphagnum moss, which are these lighter mosses that are on the background that you can kind of see a bit here. Uh, some bark pieces to kind of make the wood look natural as well as some bark that's mixed in. We've got a larger piece of wood that pretty much drapes all the way across. Another piece that shoots that way, some smaller ones that go up in that way. And then the vast majority of their day, because they are nocturnal animals, are going to be spent on these larger leaves which support them uh, from falling down into the lower uh, of the jungle. So once you get an enclosure set up like this, and this is a whole nother video in itself if you guys ever want to see a setup of one of these, I'm always welcome to set one up for you guys so you can kind of get an idea on setting one of these up efficiently and properly to make sure that this cage lasts you for years and not just a few months down the line. Because you may see some videos where people are setting up enclosures and they may do things quickly and improperly and over the misting sessions and over the crickets coming into the enclosure and isopods as well as springtails breaking down everything this background is going to slowly start to look more white than it is brown. So there's a proper way for you to do it. So that way this can be set up for years to come and you're going to have an enclosure that looks like this from the moment that you did it until the moment that you decide to break it down <clears throat> or sell it. So simple care for these guys, any sort of tree frog or species of frog is just going to be a diet primarily of crickets. Those crickets are dusted two, maybe three times a week, if not just one time a week, depending on how often I remember, and if you're one of those people that can't remember, I always recommend just setting up a schedule. Simple whiteboard in the room where the animals are allows you to know, okay, on Wednesdays we dust, every other day or every other few days is just mainly crickets. And me personally, once they get to this size, I'm only feeding these guys once every five days. 
Uh, so that'll be, you know, usually every Friday, I want to go run air, up crickets, dust them off, uh, you know, maybe once or twice a month, and put those inside the enclosure. And as you can see, they are happy, fat, healthy tree frogs. Uh, once they get to this size, they're hardy individuals, but when they are babies, you do get some variation as far as just being able to take care of them and make sure you're doing it properly. So as adults, I completely recommend the largest enclosure you can get. The more plants, these large leaves that can support them, the better. Uh, right now, they're in a 36 by 18 by 24, and, or excuse me, 36 by 18 by 36 or maybe it's 24 but it's it's a large enclosure as you guys can see when my head's out of the way it's got pretty much everything you'll need in it uh, so outside of the crickets it's just a day, twice a day misting super early in the morning right at night once the lights go off because that's usually when they're most active and then feeding i'll drop the crickets in about any time of the day usually anywhere between about 8 to 15 or so because there's two individuals in here um, and then outside of that, just setting up an enclosure, the ABG mix, the well-draining soil, as well as all the different plants that you can get into the enclosure that can support the weight of a large frog like this one. And then um, just making sure that you're staying on top of any sort of mosses or funguses that may be overgrowing and things of that nature and possibly crickets that have been lingering in the cage for too long. And that's pretty much all, man. You know, once you get into these frogs, larger species of frogs that don't really need a constantly wet environment. Uh, you know, the misting of once or twice a day up an enclosure like this, feeding the crickets, it's pretty much all you need to do. You know, I, I've had these guys for over a year, and now that they're finally full grown from the babies that they were, um, they just go right into this enclosure and they settle in on large leaves and you feed every five days and that's pretty much all you need to do, man. So it's just setting up an enclosure like this that's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of work, patience, and just paying attention to the details. And then once you have a frog that's this size, you know, getting them into this enclosure and watching them, you know, become associated with the different plants and where to sit at night to get a good overlook of the entire tank for those predators as well as for uh, their prey is just, so you know, I have some larger sticks over here off in the corner one over here that's underneath a leaf that they can get under as well and then you know just everything else is just draped in and around eight underneath at the bottom in case they want to ever hit the forest floor or do ever happen to hit the forest floor we've also got some leaf litter down there as well and these guys they're super prone to when they do walk around on the floor being covered in dirt and you may be able to see it a little bit on that side but outside of that man that's pretty much the full care guide on the cruzio hyla craspidopus better known as the fringe leaf frog. They are, like I said, an amazing example of tree frogs. And if you guys are ever looking to or want to get into these frogs, I'm always open to questions here on YouTube as well as Instagram. Feel free to shoot me over a message and I'd be happy to help you guys because I have a lot of friends that keep these special, special frogs, man. And of course, thank you guys for tuning into another episode. Hope to see you real soon, man. Herb Hero, signing out.